Hey everybody, welcome to today's breakfast. My name is Casey Star Long and look, if this is your first time ever watching one of my videos, I wanna welcome you. So what I do every day is, at least Monday through Friday, is I come on and I share a word from the Lord. And so I wanna welcome you. So you guys, today we're gonna have breakfast. And so our, our title, our focus today is going to be about how to think life-giving thoughts. All right. That's what we're going to be talking about today. And I call it today's breakfast because breakfast is supposed to be the most important meal of the day. And just think how nutritious it is to receive a word from the Lord. So what I do is I ask God, I say, God, give me a word for your people. God, give me a word. Use me prophetically to just speak to the hearts and to the minds of your people. And so the word that the Lord gave me for you today is we're gonna talk about how to think life-giving thoughts, all right? And so, good morning, Naisha, good to see you. And so when we talk about how to think life-giving thoughts, we're gonna be talking about really thinking about what we think about and uh, really making sure that the thoughts that we think about, the thoughts that enter into our minds and that we process in our hearts, that they are thoughts that bring us life not death. Joyce Meyer, she wrote a book many years ago that has been very successful called The Battlefield of the Mind. And essentially what that book talks about is that we know that we don't fight against flesh and blood. So there aren't these physical demons that we see that we like box with our fist and kick with our feet, that it's a spiritual war. OK, so the enemy sends out their powers, their principalities, their spiritual wickedness in high places. And so what happens is, is that Satan, he will he will try to distract us from our purpose, move us away from God by sending us these negative thoughts. All right. And they can be thoughts of evil, um, thoughts of like, you'll you're never you'll never make it. You're not good enough. You know, um, everybody, you know, doesn't like you. You know, these are just some examples of just negative thoughts that the enemy will try to bring into our minds. And so we're going to talk about how do you think life giving thoughts? Because what happens is, is if we consistently listen to the enemy with those negative thoughts, we'll find ourselves paralyzed. We'll find ourselves stuck and we will find ourselves not doing the things that God has called us to do. Now, there's a scripture in Proverbs 23 and 7 where it says, so basically as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And so what the writer of Proverbs is saying is that basically how you think about yourself, how you think about whatever situation, um, that's how it will manifest. That's how it materializes. And so recently um, I found myself and, you know, even though I teach a lot about power thoughts, I know that this is an area that the enemy always tries to get me in my mind. And so I kind of feel like, you know, this is an area of expertise that I do a lot of teaching about, you know, just thinking the way how God thinks. And so even though um, as a Christian and um, as a Bible teacher, I still have to be really careful um, and really stop and think about, you know, what I am thinking about. Like, is this thought true? So I'm going to share with you um, what I do and what I've had to do recently um, just with my thoughts. OK. And so because one of the things about today's breakfast is we always want to just hop right into what God is saying. And so our scripture, it's going to come from Philippians chapter four and eight. And so I have it up on the screen, but I'm going to read it to you. OK, and this is the Apostle Paul and he's talking and he says, and now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. So Paul is about to teach us how to think life giving thoughts. He says, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. 
Okay, so I'm reading from the New Living Translation, but this is what the this is what God is saying to us about how we want to make sure that we are thinking life giving thoughts. There's a lot of stuff going on in our nation right now. There's a lot of stuff, you know, going on with us personally as we get ready to go back to work or, you know, just kind of getting a handle of things, you know, whether it's financially, whether it's, you know, there is an uprise now in the numbers of COVID. But I believe that God is saying, look, I want you to I want you to focus on thinking life giving thoughts. OK, I want you to focus on thinking how I think. This is what the Lord is saying, that we want to make sure that our thoughts are lining up with God's thoughts. OK. And. All right. Sorry about that. Um, sorry about that, you guys. OK. And so. God gives us this really filtration system that we can run our thoughts through, okay? And so the first thing is, is we wanna think about, is this thought true? All right, so, you know, when a thought comes into your mind and you process it, you wanna think about, wait a second, is this thought true? Is this thought, does it line up with what the word of God says? All right. And then you want to fix your thoughts on what is true, what is honorable and right. You know, is this thought pure? <laughs> Does God get glory out of out of this thought? Is this thought lovely? Does this bring honor to God? Is this an admirable thought? You know, we kind of talked about yesterday about making sure that offense doesn't get into our heart. You know, we can line up our thoughts and say, well, would God get glory? out of this thought? Is this a thought that lines up in the word of God? Um, you know, and, and then the Bible says to think about things that are excellent and praiseworthy, worthy of praise. These are things that we want to think about that bring us life. Okay. These are things that we want to think about that gives glory to God. So God is really focusing on us to just making sure that we're thinking about what we're thinking about. OK, um, you know, I've shared before that if I'm not careful, I can tend to run um, anxious. I can tend to get in worry. I can tend to get in fear. And so I have to be really careful that if I find myself getting overwhelmed, if I find myself, you know, not feeling secure, then I have to stop and think about, well, what are you thinking about? And is that thought true? You know, um, I've, I sh I've shared in the past about how um, I wrote a book a couple of years ago called Self-Esteem Through Scripture. And I actually want to sew this book into someone today. So, you know, if if you're if you're like you want the book um, and if I can sew it into you, just put it in the comments. But this book, it's available on Amazon. And um, I wrote this book because um, I was going through really a, a season of just really low self-esteem. I didn't have a job job. So money was really tight. Um, I had felt that God was basically ripping all of kind of like my security blankets. And um, I just found myself in just a season where I just had really low confidence. And um, I felt God was like, look, you need to go through my word and know what my word says about you. Because if we do this scripture and if we try to line up our thoughts, well, is this is this true? Is it noble? Is it praiseworthy? Well, we got to get in a position where we know what God's word says about us. So I took some time and I just studied the word of God. And basically, this is a devotional self-esteem through scripture where it tells you what God's word says about you. And there's a devotional reading that you can do every day. And what it what the purpose is, is to just build up your self-esteem through the word of God. So I believe that the enemy, he uses this time to make people feel that they're not enough, that, you know, you're lacking something. Um, he uses this time to bring in anxiety or fear, fear about God's provision, all of that to make us scared, to make us feel stuck. You don't want to move, you know, because I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to do, do it the right way. But whatever it is, I really believe God is like, look, you need to think life giving thoughts, because what happens is, is that when we focus too much on what the enemy is saying, then we become paralyzed. And really that that brings to the death of us. You know, we're not life giving. We're not giving God glory. We're just stuck. All right. And, you, you know, you've seen people like that where they have just been 
listening to the enemy for so long that they are just tormented in their thoughts. And so God is saying that I'm giving you a system so you can think life giving thoughts. God is saying, I'm showing you a recipe so you can think how I think. And so we run it through that filtration system. Is the thought true? Is it lovely? Is it honorable? Does this thought give God praise? Does this thought bring life to me? And if it doesn't, you got to go. You get out of here. You don't get to you don't get to come in. And so second, second Corinthians chapter 10 verses three through five, it tells us that we pull down strongholds. So, you know, this week, you know, some thoughts that have tried to come in. What, you know, I run it through the filtration system in Proverbs chapter four, verse eight. And if it's if this thought is not lining up with the word of God, then look, you got to go. You didn't come from the Lord. This thought came from the devil. It's not lining up with what God's word says about me. So you got to go. You got to go. And so you got to be OK with kicking, th- kicking thoughts out and lining it up with the word of God. I want to let you know that God loves you. He is for you. God is going to provide your every need. His plans and his purposes for you are good. Even though you may not be able to see the way, even though you may not know exactly how you're going to get out of this situation, if you love the Lord and you are called according to his purpose, he will use every situation. It'll turn out for your good. That is a promise. In Romans chapter eight, verses 28. So I want to assure you that everything is going to turn out for your good. OK, so any thoughts from the enemy that you're going down, that you won't be able to make it, that you're not good enough, that, you know, you're, you're going to be broke forever, <laughs> that you'll always be in debt. You'll never get out of this situation. Those are thoughts of death. And those are thoughts that are not noble. They are not true. They are not praiseworthy. They are not admirable. So what you do is you pull them down. You basically say, wait a second, this thought didn't come from the Lord. So I'm I'm pulling it out. I'm not thinking about it. I'm 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 I kick that thought out. And so sometimes I find myself saying out loud, oh, that thought didn't come from the Lord. So I rebuke that thought in the name of Jesus. (laughs) Oh, that thought didn't come from God. So I'm I'm not devil. You're on mute. I remember hearing the preacher, prophet Marcus Mickles. He said, you know, sometimes you just have to put the enemy on mute. And, you know, you take out your remote control and just silence the enemy. Wait a second. That thought does not line up with the word of God. So you got to go. It's so important for us to think life-giving thoughts. You know, yesterday, I just had to pause everything at the end of the day and just have some quiet time. I want to affirm you that it's okay to take quiet time, that sometimes our central nervous system just needs a break. And especially as women, we're processing all types of things, fixing dinner, making sure the kids are okay, working in ministry, working in your job, trying to eat healthy, whatever it is that, you know, you're responsible for. And sometimes at the end of the day, your central nervous system, that that computer on the inside of you that processes everything, it just needs silence. It just needs time where you and God are just able to just be refreshed. So yesterday I told my husband, I said, look, you got this TV blaring. I'm leaving. (laughs) I'm leaving out of this room and I'm going into another room where it's dark and it's quiet. And I'm just going to sit and listen to God. That was so refreshing. That was so refreshing. And so having that time where you can just sit with God and just be like, God, I know you love me. God, I know you are for me. I know greater is he that is in me than anything that is in this world. I know, God, I am more than a conqueror. God, I know all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. Lord, your name is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. 
You know, you just spend that time in the presence of God. And that is pouring life into you, pouring life into you. So it's part of your mental health. (laughs) It's part of your emotional health. It's part of your spiritual health to make sure that you are thinking life-giving thoughts. Joyce Meyer, she shares in one of her books about that's one of the first thing that she does is that she just thinks life-giving thoughts. You know, she just takes that time to just think about what the word of God says about her. And so I want to provide a resource for you guys that um, my book, um, Self-Esteem Through Scripture, it's all about what God's word says about you. So if you just want to have like one central place where you're like, well, what does the word of God say about me? I really need to know it. I kind of know some of these scriptures, but if you just kind of want to have one central place that you can go to, um, my book is available. It's on amazon.com and you can just get it. And so it's just all about what God's word says. And so every now and again, I just pull out my own book (laughs) and I'm like, okay, this is what the word God, this is what the word of God says about me. And so look, Sometimes we all just need to be refreshed in the word of God. And so I said that I wanted to um, sew one of these books into somebody. And so I'm looking at some of the comments. All right. And so if you are like, you really, you just want me to sew it into you, I can. And so um, Anitra says, where can it be purchased? I know several who could use it and I like to purchase. Okay. Anitra, if you want to purchase it, you can go to amazon.com. It's right there. I also have, because I know you live really close to me, I have some hard copies right here at my house. Um, But for those of y'all that may not be local or living in North County, um, you can just go to amazon.com. And if I could sew, if somebody would like it just for me to sew into, I can do that. Um, But for those of you that want to purchase and just support, you can do that too. So, I mean, maybe somebody, you know, on YouTube or wherever later on, you know, you want to just inbox me and maybe you can't afford to get the book at this time and I'll sew it into you. So just let me know. All right, you guys. So that really is the word that the Lord placed on my heart today about just making sure that we are thinking life giving thoughts and being intentional about that. And I just want to leave you with this. OK, because we're word girls. <laughs> <laughs> and word word men as well, because I've heard that some of y'all men are tuning in, telling my husband that y'all listen. So God bless you. We look, you're welcome. You're welcome here. So how do we think life giving thoughts? Philippians four and eight. OK, we make sure that our thoughts are true. They're honorable. They're right. They're pure. They're lovely and admirable. Think about it like a filtration system. You know how like you um, connect one of those filtration systems to your faucet. Same thing. You know, that's what we do with our thoughts. Wait a second. Is this thought true? Is it pure? Is it noble? Is it admirable? You know, not just like the thoughts that Satan will kind of put in our minds about ourselves to condemn us or to accuse us to make us feel bad. But even some of the thoughts we may have about other people, especially in light of what's on social media and people are disagreeing about what's taking place, you know, politically or whatever. You know, we can just say, wait a second, is this thought that I have about my neighbor? Is it a thought that's admirable? Is it a thought that's praiseworthy? Does it see the best in others? If not, you got to get out of here. Okay. Um, Verse six, which is right ahead, verse six and seven is another verse that I want to share and then I'm gone, where it says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which surpasses all understanding. Okay, his peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. I like this scripture because it's letting us know that we can experience God's peace. And then it says that whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is on honorable, think about these things. So a lot of times the enemy comes to rob us of peace. He comes to make us think thoughts of death, um, evil, like, oh, you're never going to get out of these situations. Da, 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 da. You know, that's what he does. But this above scripture in Romans four and six is saying, look, don't be, don't worry about anything. Don't be anxious about anything. Come to God 
with your supplication, but also come to him with thanksgiving. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. So that's another tip too. If you feel like you just need peace, you need peace in your mind. So I wanna pray for you guys today, okay? Heavenly Father, God, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, that peace is our portion. Now, Father, I pray for every person watching this live, God, whether they're watching live, whether they're watching the replay, Father, I pray right now over their minds in the name of Jesus. Father, I take authority, God, as your daughter, God, and I cover, Lord, every person's mind with the blood of Jesus. God, we rebuke, God, we bind, God, every demonic thought that has been planted by the enemy. Father, I pray, Lord, for discernment and revelation. Father, I thank you, God, for quick revelation that, God, they will be able to discern whether this thought has come from you or whether it has come from the enemy. Father, I thank you that, Lord, their feet are, are set square in the foundation of your word, Father. I thank you, God, they will be ruthless when it comes to their thoughts, God, that Lord, if it didn't come from you, then God, Lord, they boldly, they confidently, without a doubt, they pull it down in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, Lord, um, that they always have on their helmet of salvation, Father. So that way, God, when a negative thought comes in, it just pings off their armor. God, I pray, Lord, for the breastplate of righteousness. God, I thank you, Lord, for the sword of the spirit, which is your word, God, that comes out of their mouth. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the shield of faith that quenches every fiery dart. In the name of Jesus, Satan, you are a liar. God, I thank you, Lord, for life-giving thoughts. Father, I thank you that your word comes alive. It bubbles up in their belly, Father. I thank you, Lord, for the power of the Holy Spirit that brings to remembrance every word. Father, I thank you, God, that they are victorious. God, I thank you, Lord, that they are more than a conqueror. Father, I thank you, Lord, that they are mighty and they will do great exploits for the kingdom of God. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the creativity, Lord, that is welled up in their bellies. Father, I thank you, Lord, for blessing and establishing the work of their hands. Father, I speak diligence. I speak discipline. Father, I speak focus. God, I pray that their eyes are set like flint, God, that they will do, that they will achieve the things, Father, that you have called them to do. Father, I thank you, Lord, that every demonic thought that says that they can't do it, that they won't do it, that it'll be too hard, that they don't have the money. Father, I thank you, Heavenly Father, that every spirit of fear, it is broken right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, Lord, for a great anointing of grace. Father, I pray, God, a double portion of faith, God. Lord, fill them up with faith, God. I pray, God, that you give them a desire to hunger and thirst after your word. Father, I thank you, Lord, for an anointing to memorize scripture, God. I pray that, God, they will eat your word, God, that the word will be ingested in them, God, that they will know, God, that they can do all things through you, God, who gives them strength. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the next level of authors, God. I thank Thank you, Lord, for the next level of business owners, God. I thank you, Lord, for every God-given dream, Father. Now, Lord, I speak, Lord, to the dreams and the desires, God, that you have placed in them, God, that maybe it has lined dormant, God, because, Lord, they were thinking the things of the enemy. But, God, I pray that, Lord, you bring it up to remembrance, Father. I pray, Heavenly Father, God, that they will just run on faith and say that I will do it, that I can do it, I will do it, Father. I pray, God, Lord, for a can-do spirit. God. I pray, Heavenly Father, God, that you will breathe on them. God, breathe on us in a way that only you can, Father. Lord, I pray, God, that you break every barrier, every partition that the enemy has set up that is said that, Lord, we can't do it, that they can't do it. But Father, I thank you, Lord, God, that your word is true, God. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for your grace. I thank you, God, for victory, God. I thank you, Father, that we finish strong, that they finish strong, God. And so, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that our minds, God, are set on you. I thank you, Father, that we think how you think, Father. And so, Lord, I pray, God, that you sit in our thoughts. That, God, you just you just take seat in our thoughts, Father. I pray, God, that you get comfortable 
in our thoughts, Father. And I speak over the mental headspace and airspace, God, over every viewer, God. I thank you, Lord, for your love. I thank you, God, your word says in Zephaniah 3 and 17, God, that you rejoice over us with singing. Father, I pray that every person can hear you sing your, your words of approval, your encouragement. God, may people feel encouraged today. Father, I pray, God, people will feel encouraged today, God, to keep going, to not give up, to persevere. Father, I pray that you release ministering angels, God, to clap. <laughs> to encourage God people to continue to go on. I pray God that you'll use us to encourage other people as well. God, I pray the gift of exhortation, God, encouragement, God, to move in faith in Jesus's name. Y'all want to let you know that you can do it. I want to let you know that God had you watch this video for a purpose that he wants to transform your thoughts, that he is aligning your thoughts so that you think about yourself the way how he sees you. That's all it is, is that God wants you to see yourself the way how he sees you. He's deposited creativity. He's deposited greatness. There are skills and talents on the inside of you. And God wants you to just see yourself the way how you see him. So that means that maybe you need to get the book or maybe you need to do some study to just find out what God's word says about you and get it in your heart and get it in your spirit. So when those thoughts come in, you're like, nope, you got to get out of here. That's not true. That's not how God sees me. So I bless you guys. Thank you guys so much for joining in today. Um, Just a quick announcement. If you want to get the book, you can. If you're like, Casey, can you please help me? Um, will you sew in the book? I'm going to sew one book to somebody. Okay. So um, just let me know. You can inbox me or I'll go through the comments and um, I can send the book, um, but you can purchase it. For those that are able to purchase it, go to amazon.com and you can do so. Again, the book is all about self-esteem through scripture. It's just one place that has the scriptures of what God says about you. And it is a devotional. It's a 30 day devotional. Um, and it's just a great way um, to get rooted in the word of God. Also, some of y'all know I've been sharing about this is that I am working on a book of prayers for St. Louis by St. Louisans. So that means that we all are contributing <laughs> to this book. So I'm asking you to please submit a prayer uh, to be published inside of this book called When St. Louis Prays. And you can send your submission to www.whensaintlouispraise.com. Um, this book will be, it'll be a compilation of prayer. So think of like chicken soup for the soul. It's going to be like that. And so I'm asking for children I'm asking for adults. You do not have to be a pastor. You don't have to be some gifted writer. We have um, editors that will help if there are grammar issues. But I'm just asking for you to write out a prayer, write out your heart, whether you have a heart for kids, teens, businesses, ministries, the church, um, whatever it is, just write out a prayer and um, please do that. So we do have a deadline submission of July 31st. So that'll be great. All right, you guys. God bless you. All right, I'll be back tomorrow for more breakfast. Bye.